I love a good mystery. A little bit of horror and drama in there as well, but is Archive 81 worth a binge? We're going to talk about it. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. As you all know, I like to talk about every Netflix show and movie I can, and today's series is Archive 81, a series that I believe will continue to make a splash and we'll get into why. This is a spoiler-free review. If you guys have any thoughts, feelings, or questions, please leave them down below. And if you want to support this channel, be sure to drop your thumbs up on this video. Let's get right into it. An archivist is hired to restore a collection of tapes, but he finds himself reconstructing the work of a filmmaker and her investigation into a dangerous cult and this brings him into this series of mysteries and so many webs that are continuing to untangle themselves up until that final episode and the journey to that point is what I want to start with because it's a journey that not everyone is going to be on board with when it comes to the pacing, especially within that first episode. It is a slow-moving series of events as we get an idea as to what he does, what these flashbacks, these videos from 1994 will entail, and the found footage format that comes from that. You see our character of Melody, she's trying to unravel this mystery herself where she's going around this building and interviewing the residents to somewhat uncover what we perceive to be this cult-like activity going on. Now, we don't know the true nature of everything until we get a bit further down the line, and I don't want to talk about that uh, in this video, but what we perceive it to be at first is at least engaging, engaging enough for us to stick around even during the slower moments of the show, those moments of buildup, and be on board with her story. But then we see this normal feeling guy in Dan, played by Mamadou Athey, who is just so good. I love him every time I see him, but I'm always like, he needs a role. He needs a starring role in a show or movie that gives him the chance to kind of flex his acting chops. And I think, I think this might be that role. But he's a very normal guy who is doing this very tedious and repetitive series of events, unscrewing old videotapes, cleaning them. We see the process of this happening over and over and over, uh, following him around New York as he's going to purchase these tapes and just stumble upon things he's never seen before. And whether he finds them at a flea market or an estate sale, doesn't matter. He's going to do his best to restore them. And this brings him to the character of Virgil, who hires Dan to salvage some of these video cassettes that were almost completely destroyed in a fire a few years earlier. Because these tapes are being held in a remote compound, Dan decides to move out there, get the job done. He's by himself exploring this really weird-looking old house, so that gives us a bit of a an edge-of-your-seat type feel in the present series of events. But he's trying to figure out why was he hired in the first place. And to point out the obvious, we have two narratives going on in Archive 81. I mean, just look at the poster and you can kind of get a sense of that. So as we're unfolding through everything in the 1990s, we're also seeing how Dan is responding to Melody's actions while watching. But it turns out that Dan actually plays a bigger role in all of this than first imagined. Well, I guess we could have imagined him playing a bigger role, but he is completely unaware as he is watching how this is all going to culminate and come together. And thus, we have our series of mysteries and events and uh, a series that, like I said, takes a couple of episodes to really get going, to really rev up its engines or rewind its tape. That doesn't even make sense in context. The word to use here and the word that I'm going to leave you with in this review is disturbing. This is a, a very disturbing series and one that plays itself out in such a way that is so unexpected. Now, the beautiful thing about it, if you can get to this point, again, you have to be on board with the pacing, but if you can get there, it plays itself out in a way that really ties off a lot of the loose ends established outside of that main purpose, that main focus. And we don't often get that in shows like this. So I appreciate that a ton. Then you have the filmmaking. The fact that you can give us this feeling using that found footage look and have everything happening in the 90s, but then we come back to present day with a very normal feeling character of Dan, but we are placed in his shoes and we're following in his footsteps as he moves through this mystery. And um, all of that being said, I eventually got locked in. 
Now, again, personally, it took me a couple of episodes to get there. I wasn't entirely sure if this was going to work or not. But after about episode three, and maybe even the beginning of episode four, I said, you know what? I'm actually really intrigued with where this is going to go. And I love the beautiful balance of two drastically different storylines culminating and coming together. And even though it's tying off those loose ends, even though uh, we're getting some resolutions for things as we go, there is one cliffhanger at the end that will have fans wanting more. And I believe this is going to find its audience and push us, push Netflix into giving us a season too, because there is just enough there to continue on with. And I love the fact that this series can provoke a, a plethora of different thoughts as you're watching. It's like the most minute and small thing that really carries no weight can hold this evil and malevolent force behind it, or a story that he is uncovering as we uncover it as an audience. And uh, the word disturbing comes back into play because there's something more to this, whether it be the cult-like behavior of all of these interviews that she is gathering or where this progresses to and the fact that it makes me feel like I'm watching something produced by James Wan or we're always getting a great Mike Flanagan series. This is, you know, they go about it in a very different way in this show, but I just like the fact that it gives me that very disturbing and haunting feeling a bit later on and uh, that's exactly what it was going for. So in that way, it honestly nailed its target audience. Now, I won't say it nailed the finale. Like I said, there is a cliffhanger of sorts and I would say the final episode or two is not quite as impactful. It's one of those series that uh, I'm going to say it's more about the journey than the destination, but the destination in itself is good, just not as high quality compared to the buildup. All in all, I really enjoyed this show. I just think the writing is there. That slower pacing, slower buildup ended up being the right decision, in my opinion, to get us thrown into it. And at the end of the day, Archive 81 is one of those series, an anxiety-inducing series that continues to build on this mystery in a way that keeps you wanting more. Before I give you guys my score, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in and uh, supporting this channel. But my score is an 80%. Uh, for this very intriguing and, one more time, disturbing Netflix series. Don't watch this in the dark. Don't watch it if you're young. Don't watch it with your kids. Uh, but definitely watch it if you want something with that vibe. Not really jump scare heavy, but more so just kind of like chill inducing. And if that's what you want to show, that's what you're going to get. You guys are the best. Come back for more. we got a lot of great videos coming soon. I'm going to be ranking all of the Scream movies to go along with my Scream review that dropped just a day ago. I'll see you later.